We have also the sport as a kind of element that is creating a continuous uh, and con connecting the football field and some other, some other parts. Uh, in the website, you can see, as I say, all the projects from the other architects that I invite, like Toyo Ito or MDRDV or Jose Luis Mateo or so, some others. And in order to focus on the question that uh, you were, uh, we were discussing, the idea of sharing spaces, uh, at that time I was uh, very much interested about the Napster phenomena. So the people were sharing music and the people were sharing videos through internet, and I was thinking uh, how we should share physical space. As Geraldine said before, many people, I myself was living in a sharing apartment, and I knew that this was not legal. So what is really incredible is that we, as a society, we are doing something that in general are not bad. I mean, we are not killing people for sharing an apartment, but in fact, it's not legal. Maybe we could go to the jail because we are sharing an apartment. So the question is, why don't we change the rules? That's part of our society. As I said before, the things are changing. We, are, have, uh, we have small family units, etc. So I propose, in a moment that was illegal, this uh, sharing tower for the Sociopolis. And in fact, was selected for the exhibition at MoMA in the year 2006 uh, about the Spanish architecture. And here, the idea of sharing, uh, we could think that we are sharing between two apartments in one floor. Uh, no, uh, no, sorry, we can share uh, spaces inside uh, one house, as in, Geral in Geraldine house with their family in the living room. But you can be sharing, uh, for example, the toilet between two apartments, like in many uh, student residences. You can be sharing things in one floor scale. You can be sharing things in one building scale, or you can share things in the city scale. That, in fact, this is what happened with the public uh, facilities. So the idea of sharing, depending on the scale of where uh, you, you do, the result of your habitat conditions will be uh, one or another. Uh, we did another experiment. This is something Le Corbusier did in the year 20, 1925, that is to make pictures of all the objects that one of our students had in their house. Uh, it was an Italian girl, and she did the pictures of all this stuff, and we did that because, in fact, we wanted to understand what means to do a, a house. What is crucial for a house? Is the bed, when the, your house is where you have your bed, or the house or uh, is where you have the fire, where you are hot? So uh, the conclusion of this analysis is, we did some diagrams about this, is that there are 13 basic objects that you should have in your house, and those objects are connected with functions. For example, a bed, a kitchen, a toilet, a shower, etc. And depending how individual, how you are using those objects, you will have uh, one kind of living or another. For example, in the hotel where I am, in my room I have a bedroom and I have a toilet, but I don't have a kitchen. The kitchen is centralized for all the people together. This is what the communists uh, were doing in the Narconfin in the 20s, let's say. But if I am sharing a kitchen with eight people in my floor, that's a kind of sharing kitchen. So the number of people that is sharing a resource is completely crucial uh, to do something that is, let's say, internet or is communism. So that means that you can be sharing things with some colleagues because you decide, or uh, I mean, someone wants to try to destroy your family, and that's why you have only one kitchen for 200 people, let's say. No, <laughs> no that's important. I mean, four people in a car uh, can be sharing a car. 40 people in a bus, they are in a public bus. So that's completely different. So the scale of sharing is completely uh, crucial about how we do about this. So there, uh, we did many diagrams about this. This is uh, the final solution of the project that at that moment was illegal. And that's the sharing spaces in all the tower. That's the, the building. So we have a public plaza here in the, in the ground floor. Uh, this is a sharing space for families with one kid, and that's a sharing space with different functions like the uh, washing machine and internet all together.
and this is in the individual space for the sharing tower. What is really incredible, I mean, all the sociopolis is something like magic because we were, I was able to propose to someone, why don't we make a neighborhood and this generate a amount of uh, business of four, $400 million. And again, uh, with the sharing project, we were dealing, we were talking with the Minister of Housing and they change the law and they accept that uh, we should uh, promote uh, small apartments and they say that people could share 20 percent. Uh, so they, uh, the Spanish law say that the uh, minimum size for an apartment is 45 square meters. This is 450 square uh, feet. And uh, again, this is the 13 elements that we say we should have here. So that's, let's say, a standard typical minimum uh, apartment. But if we share 20%, then we have uh, some, some square meters that we could put in somewhere. OK, so let's see one sample. 100 apartments for young people with 45 square meters. But if we share 20%, we can have a space of 900 square meters in the ground floor and uh, apartments with 35, 36 meters. So this is like my hotel. So you have a big lobby or a student resident, you have a huge lobby and library or whatever, and then you have your own space. But we, this is another project that in fact right now is under construction, we decide to break in two parts this 20%. So we have six meters in one scale and three meters in another scale. And this is the diagram of the building that we are doing. So we decide is to create three uh, kinds of privacy. One private space with 36 square meters, another sharing space only with eight or 12 people with 7,200 square meters, and another 300 square meters in the ground floor. So that's the diagram of the building that we are doing. That's a young people apartment. And then the distribution is crucial in order uh, to see what means sharing in relation with private. There are uh, two different kinds of apartments. So here we have the individual apartment, and this is the sharing space that is a double space uh, where 12 apartments like this are sharing and they are having a living room, etc., etc. That's the place where the young people will be able to meet, and then you will have your uh, independent space. And in fact, this is the final solution where you have your 36 square meters, your 72 square meters sharing with 12 people and 300 square meters. So that means you pay for 45 square meters and you are using 400 square meters with different quality uh, and privacy. Uh, so this is a project that is right now under construction in, in Gandia, in the south of uh, Valencia. And this is a sample that, in fact, uh, the politicians should be really leading the transformation of the society. Should be, uh, they should not be blocking uh, the answer to the reality. I mean, if we have a new reality, we should really very fast in order to answer, in order to create good conditions for, for people. Uh, the fourth question I would like to talk is, in fact, a, ne a new step. This is a project we are developing. This is Barcelona, and this is Ancogat, uh, that's like uh, in the me metropolitan area. And we are very near the, the highway. And then with the city of San Cugat, I propose them to make even a more radical project. Why don't we make a building that is self-sufficient? Sustainability is, is good is a, a very political correct word, no? We are making development, sustain, sustainable development. But in general, you never quantify what are you exactly doing. So in order to be clear, we say, okay, we should be self-sufficient. We should do self-sufficient in different ways, and that's why we start a project for 140 apartments. In that case, we say, okay, the building should produce all the energy that it uh, needs. And in that case, uh, instead to make uh, in this neighborhood, you see there are like many uh, small apartments, like in many cities in America, we decide we should concentrate all these apartments and then to create a big park uh, around. So here we start to work with new software. In the 20s, in the Bauhaus, they say architecture uh, form follows function. 
Now we say form follows energy. That means that we are not doing forms because they are beauty. We are doing forms because we need it in order to be more efficient. That's like the nature. The form of the trees are exactly the form of the evolution of millions of years, even the form of the people, or at least some people. <laughs> <laughs> so the question is we should think uh, about how we make buildings that express what we really want to do, that are making buildings that are making all the energy that they need. So we have new software that allow to see how we can deal about this. So I did an, a partnership with ACCIONA, that is one of the most uh, uh, green companies in, in Spain. In fact, they have some thermosolar plants in Arizona here in America and with the city of San Cugat, and we are developing this project where we have uh, apartments. This will be a platinum lead qualification. It's the first building uh, in social housing uh, in Europe with this qualification. And what we did was to do a building that, in fact, is trying, from the urban point of view, is connecting with the different heights of the building that they have around, but uh, at the same time is really answering with the form to the fact that they, uh, the building want to capture uh, uh, solar energy, but at the same time also we have a biomass plant here that is taking the rubbish from the one forest around. So it's a mixture, mixture between uh, solar plants and biomass. The crucial question here is who pay the extra cost? Because in general, the developers say, yeah, that's great, but who is paying the extra cost? In general, uh, you want an affordable housing, and you go to the city, or you go to the market, and you say, I want to do this. And in fact, it's, not, it's irrelevant that you are doing, or you are putting more, you are investing more in order to do a better building that is not destroying the planet or whatever. But no one is taking care about this. Well, that's more expensive. I don't want it. And in general, the people is dealing just about the price. And in fact, many developers, some of those that are not here, uh, they are thinking how to invest as less as possible in order to earn as much as possible. So the answer is this. The question is that the business of housing will be more related with the business of the new cars, not the old cars that are a little bit in crash. So that means that before the developer built a house and wanted to sell it and to leave it. I don't want to take care about what is happening over there. It was not very well built, so let's see. But now, the business, in fact, is about the management of the older resources that are around the buildings. So the question is, if I invest 25% more in order to generate energy, I can stay here and I can be have a contract selling the energy to all those people. If I am doing something that is collecting water, I can be selling water or whatever. So the question is that we calculate there is around 25% more of investment. We are working with MIT since the year 2001 in order to make intelligent buildings, in order to save energy, but also we are dealing with the idea of bringing technology to the scale of the living places. So in that case, we are working with the idea of the digital fabrication or personal fabrication in order, for example, to, uh, in, uh, to print furniture. So that means instead to buy furniture, why don't we print furniture? And the question is that we need some machines that right now are not very expensive. And the question is that we were designing some another uh, housing for young people where the students could print their own furniture. So that means that uh, buildings are becoming, again, something, are not just pure volume and pure cash in form of bricks, let's say, but are places where you can create communities, where the people can produce food in the neighborhood, where the people can uh, develop uh, work at home sometimes, sometimes using some shared facilities in order to print buildings and, in fact, to develop uh, some other way of living more connected with what the internet generation, in fact, is uh, requesting. So that's all. Thank you. <laughs>